اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم فلما نسو ما ذکر به فتحنا علیہم ابواب کل شیء حتی ازا فریح بما اوتو اخذناہم بغدتا فائزاہم مبلسون فقط عذاب رقوم اللذین ظلموا والحمد للہ رب العالمین صدق اللہ العظیم اعوذ باللہ السمی العلیم من الشیطان الرجیم من حمزہ ونفخہ ونفخہ اعوذ بکلمات اللہ تامہ من کل شیطان وحامہ ومن کل عین لامہ اعوذ بکلمات اللہ تامات من شر ما خلق ربی اعوذ بکا من حمزات الشیاطین اعوذ بکا ربی ان یحضرو فاللہ خیر حافظ و وہو عرحم الراحمین آمین یا رب العالمین حسبی اللہ و نعم الوکیل قدر اللہ و ما شاء افعال فبی ای آلائی ربکم آتکر دبان the ayah which I have read, the two verses from the Holy Quran, Surah Al-An'am, chapter 6, verse 44 and 45. Allah says, فَلَمَّا نَسُمَا ذُكْرُ بِهِ فَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَوَّابَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ When people forget our warnings, we open for them all the good doors, the doors of blessings, etc. for time being. حَتَّى إِذَا فَرِيهُ بِمَا أُوتُوا أَخَزْنَاهُ بَغْدَةً فَإِذَاهُمْ مُبْلِسُونَ Then suddenly we catch them for an account. Where are you going? We slay them, we catch them from their backs. Why? Because of this dwelling, dwelling in these kind of things which you are enjoying for time being and forgetting Allah's warning because of this. Then Allah says that فَقُطِعَ عَدَابِرُ الْقَوْمِ لِزِنَا ظَلَمُ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Then their last remnants were to be cut off. And then the righteous people of that time and era, they say that, Oh Allah, thanks to you that you have killed or eradicated these evil mongers. Chapter 6, verse 44 and 45. Today the topic is in equality of wealth in the whole world. Today, unfortunately, 80% of people are living under $10 per day. Disgrace on humanity. Disgrace. In this clip of mine, inshallah, I will be adding an excerpt from one of the documentary of the famine in Sudan and one of the picture I will share with you, that picture which made the photographer to be to suicide, to commit suicide after four months because of the vulture at the back. Inshallah, I will discuss that point later on. Anyways, unfortunately, then multinational companies, Amazon, one person, Jeff, Jeff, his name is Jeff, uh, uh, and Jeff was brought to us something, Bezos something, sorry, yeah, Jeff Bezos. Can you believe it? His net worth is 124 billion US dollars. Then we have these multinational companies, Amazon, imagine that, one person, his uh, net worth is 124 billion US dollars. Imagine it, what kind of distribution of wealth do we have? And then that guy is owning slowly, slowly everything, artificial intelligence and up to every tiny little thing and future is in his hands. Imagine that, as I said that, according to statistics, that 80% of people, they're living under $10 per day. How they're surviving. And imagine there are many like... 30% people or 40% they are living under one dollar or dollar like that. Disgrace on humanity today. These people, multinational people, the billionaires, one person, imagine that. And this is what Prophet ﷺ said that. The time will come where there is so much abundance of wealth, but it will be only beneficiary, beneficial for just least or typical or counted people. We call them dictatorship of the capitalists, that they will be ruling you over. Before they were feudals, now you have capitalists on your heads. So there is nothing, there is no reformation on you, only the system, uh, that's, you know, this thing, we have made ourselves, you know, Satan said that we ourselves, you know, disguise and camouflage these kings, these rulers into a new system our system but you think that it is free it is freedom it's not freedom we put these people at the due democratic dresses but this is a demon demon dresses basically he said that 
تُو نے کیا دیکھا نہیں مغرب کا جمہوری نظام ہے یو ناٹ سین دا سسٹم آف ویسٹرن ڈیموکریسی اندرو جو چہرا یو نو روشن اندرو چنگے سے تاریخ تر ہی سیڈ دیٹ دا تھنگس یو نو دس اسپارکلنگ اور دس ریڈینس از اونلی آؤٹر سپرفیشل بٹ ان سائڈ اف یو گو اینڈ پاؤڈر ان سائڈ اٹ از جسٹ اے ڈارکر دین دی بلڈ شیپ آف جنگیش خان This is actually basically happening. You think everything is so cool, everything is normal, you know, hyper-normalized and everything is, you know, okay, the system is supposed to be like that. No, it's not supposed to be like that. It was made on the purpose. So, one person is having this. Now, according to Shah Waliullah, Rahmatullah Alayhi from Dilhi, he said beautifully that if the wealth of the society or wealth of the country or the whole world, sorry, is not divided on the just rules, then what happens? Two kinds of society will born, and both will commit kufr, disbelief. How? One society will take a lot of money and they will forget Allah as the ayah which I have read, two verses in the Quran. You know, فَلَمَّا نَسُوا مَا ذُكُّرُوا بِهِ فَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ That when Allah, op- you know, forget Allah, He opened the doors. You think that the doors are opening for you? Is it a good thing? No. It's not a good thing. It's precautionary hazards by Allah. It's a divine hit list. You have to just think that it could be a divine hit list. And then you think that, no, Allah is blessing me. No, Allah is not blessing you. There's something wrong with you. So, I open the doors. The doors of goodness. The doors of uh, this uh, providence. Enjoy. Then suddenly I catch them for the account. Where are you going? Then you all you know, go into despondency. You say, oh Allah, why, why have you done to us? You know, why you forsook us? Why you have forsaken us? Then this is these kind of things you start, you know, uh, questioning Allah, questioning God and tempting Him. So this thing is a bad thing. Rich society will forget Allah because our ultimate goal is to worship Allah. being a Muslim or a Muslim and the other society poor power the poor people they will become so down that they forget Allah because Prophet ﷺ says that the kufr will lead you to uh, this faqr sorry faqr will lead you to kufr this famine this starving of the long term this starving can lead you towards disbelief because you said there is no God if there was a God he could have helped us There is nobody, nobody divine, everybody is a man, is a God. So this kind of waswasa comes into your mind. Because Allah says in the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 155, We will test you. The test you of a fear which you don't know. The test of loss of your children. The test of hunger. And then you will see who is the best in perseverance. Who is, the, is, my, who is my real servant. In Allah Ma'asabirin, who is with Allah in his sabr, in perseverance. So this kind of test we have being a Muslim and Muslimah. So Allah says this in the Quran, the test will be there, but the other thing, exploitation is also there. And that exploitation of injustice for long term is your own hands are doing. When the society bubble collapses, when this whole recession comes, when this de- devaluation of the currency, inflation, going on, keep going on, you don't know where is the catch, then there's something wrong, I will quote you the hadith of Rasulullah for my support, and then I will tell you the khutbah of Umar ibn al-Khattab and Abu Bakr al-Siddiq before they did, before they basically started their caliphate first we uh, let me quote you the hadith of Rasulullah Prophet says that ma min qawm min yazharu fihim ar Riba, Prophet ﷺ says that if any nation, if any nation is built on the grounds of riba, usury, interest, either capital or whatsoever, illa ukhidu bir bisarati. Prophet said that this whole nation will go into hunger, starvation, famine. Wama min qomin yazharu fihim ar rusha. If any nation is built on the grounds of bribery. Prophet said that nation will become timid, that afraid, terrified, petrified, terrified nation. Subhanallah, this is the fatwa of Muhammad Arabi 1400 years ago, where today these great, you know, break even analysts, 
are failed to provide the answer. These break even point that where you know the loss and the profit is balanced. These people are being paid millions of dollars to solve this recession, these booming issues, all these things. They have failed. They have utterly failed to do that. Prophet 1400 years gave us one nuskha, one medicine to solve this sickness. That if you do these kind of monkey tricks, that you make a nation on the grounds of interest, your future, your destination is famine, starving, hunger. And on the other side, if you try to do the rishwa based on kind of thing, where you have bribery, nepotism, cronyism, partiality, despotism kind of things in your uh, social laws and the political laws, then keep remember that you will become a timid nation. This is the fatwa of Prophet Muhammad 1400 years ago. Please listen this, these economists people, these economists these kind of, you know, uh, accountant today, we are doing C, C, you know, ACCA and all these things, you know, to solve these issues. This is what the problem is. The problem, you are not going into the real problem. You are just, you know, dissecting the thing without knowing the root cause. What is the root cause of this etiology of the problem? You are not going into that. So, this is the problem we have in this society. That is why we are suffering from hunger, strive and all that stuff. This is the point uh, the, in the beginning uh, I was discussing about the unjust. Why do we have unjust? Why? Because the reason is that people who are dominant, who started this kind of thing, which you call paper currency, promissory notes, from the beginning, from the Rothschild family, taking the gold and giving you this and you putting in the debts, the control, we call it internal capital management, towards external capital management. When these two managements gets uncontrolled, then this kind of society born. This is it. I challenge people come and talk to me on these issues, the issues of today's economy. Why this economy is going down? Why? Who has the control? Who has the control to put this intrinsic value of something? Performance related pay, PRP. We are being told in Islam that you should be paid according to PRP. No mercy. This is haram in Islam. You sit and do nothing and eat money. Because Allah says in the Quran, Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse 90. That oh you who believe, remember that indeed intoxicants, gambling, well maisru, the mais the maisru is speculation. The word earning when you something when you earn on the grounds of doing nothing. Gambling, you know what is a gambling? Then divination by arrows. All these things are soothsaying, you call it. All these things are the hands of the devil. So stop it. Fajr tanibuhu. Stop it if you want to survive or if you want to be prosperous. This is the fatwa of Quran. I am not going into detail that how the western economy is running on the grounds of gambling. The percentage. This is not today's topic. Today's topic is to open the eyes of the people that can't you see all these mass hysteria of a economical crisis we are suffering you cannot even pray you know that today even the praise belong to the classes of riches a person who is rich is going to do umrah he's in sitting in the front of the tower he's sitting in the front of masjid haram even he doesn't even bother to come down and he's praying in his own you know hotel and the poor person, he has to take the motel at the back, way back from the haram. And this poor guy, you know, is is zaif, he's old man, he has to crawl coming to the masjid. Today, the prayers, today, the du'as, today, the ibadah is only on the base of what? On the riches, astaghfirullah. What kind of people have we become? Everything is business, everything is money, time is money, time is money. So we should open our eyes. What are we doing in this kind of era? We should educate people. I'm not telling to, I never tell people and my philosophy is to go and do something by force. No, I said educate people. The first thing is education. First thing, the, every new idea is the minority of one. 
and it inculcates, inbreds into the one's personal mind. And then you start exfoliating, then you start uh, enunciating to the people. And then this idea becomes a big idea. The way da, this Das Kapital was written by Frederick Engels and Karl Marx, I don't support them. But I give you the example. It was written where? In Germany, Frankfurt. And this revolution came in Russia by Vladimir Lenin. Can you mean Russia? The way a polar apart. Wide gulf between the distances of between these two countries. But you see, the idea was inbred in one person's mind which sparked where in Rus in Russia. This is the example I'm giving you. We should educate people. I'm not I'm telling people to go and fight. No, educate people. Think. Mungkin this education will solve the issue. We don't need to go the further steps or to do something. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 11, 12 years of his prophetic life, he collected those beautiful, you know, these uh, mar, these kind of diamonds, you can call it. These beautiful diamonds he collected. 313 disciples, apostles of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because of 12 years of preaching, passive resistance, ahimsa, preaching them changing the hearts, touching the hearts of those people. And after 12 to 13 long years, unbearable years of this kuffar attack, of this kuffar Makkah and the other, you know, this munafikin of Madhya, this uh, munafik was sitting also there. All these kind of pressure Prophet Sallallahu faced. And he uh, just uh, got 313 Havari disciples, Sahaba Jumain who help them. Imagine this kind of patience. So inculcate idea. Make the idea. Let people listen. What we are trying to say. Take the example of Umar ibn al-Khattab. Umar ibn al-Khattab. I'm coming to those uh, sermons I'm telling you as a leader. You see, as long as we have interest system, UG system in our economical bubble, we will never, never prosper. How hard you try. Today, Pakistan is taking loan after loan, droves after droves from IMF. And this is, this, this is something, a trap. You will never be able to get out from it. Remember that this is the, uh, the hadith of Rasulullah You're taking direct, you know, interest. What Quran says, Allah says in the Quran, that if you do not stop from interest and you keep saying that the business is like of interest, Allah says that you will be burnt in the hellfire forever. And Allah and His Rasul engage war against you. SubhanAllah, you are already under the war from Allah and His Rasul. What are you expecting from others? You keep talking on the pol these political and you know, analyst people, the key panels. They keep talking about, you know, the external forces who want to destroy Pakistan, the external forces. There is no external force right now. There is a spiritual force of Allah that you are being listed in the divine hit list of Allah. Because of these kind of things. Dr. Israr Ahmad Rahimullah, all of his entire life he was telling to the people, for repent, repent, repent from this abominable stuff, this usury and interest and capital interest. But nothing was being heard. Ulama says, if you have to sleep on the roads, do that. It is better than to commit an adultery of fornication with your mother in the public. Who said this? Ulama? No. Hadith of Rasulullah that this riba has 70 branches and in the, the least, the minimum, you know, the branch is the sin, which is the sin which is the value, which is holding the magnitude that somebody is committing fornication with his mother in the public. This is the least sin of taking eating riba. Prophet says, all these four people are equally penalized on the day of resurrection. The one who sees the riba is going, the one who takes riba, the one who gives riba, and one who records. All these four are equally penalized on the day of judgment without any excuse of a nip or a tot. Let me tell you the best system laid by the human being after Prophet Muhammad was Umar ibn al-Khattab the best economical system, the system of social justice. For 300 years, humanity is seeking for social justice from east to west and west to east. 
no solution was being given to solve this issue. Nothing was being given because you cannot solve it. You can't solve it unless you eradicate yourself from interest. This is the test of Allah for humanity. That do they really eat riba? Do they run their economy on the grounds of riba? If you do so, then there is no solution, no salvation on this earth. Keep, you know, crawling. Keep dragging your feet. There is no solution for you. Nothing will be given to you. You are just in, uh, just being considered as a loser. Umar ibn al-Khattab was, when he became a caliphate, he asked the people, what would you do if Umar go astray from the straight path? One person, we call them Diyati, the local guy, a mumkin, a farmer, a person who is working, you know, in a primary sector. He just stood up and said, Umar, we will straight you from this. He was pointing towards his sword. And you know what Umar said? He didn't say that, how dare you, you said to me like that. I'm a ruler, I'm a king. Inverted commas. He said, oh Allah, thanks to you that you have not made me the ruler of a dumb nation. Hmm. This is real. This is, the, this is the essence I'm telling you. Essence of a ruler as a person. Your objective that the absolute power will not be given to anyone. Absolute power was only in the hands of prophets. And after that, sovereignty belongs to Allah alone and you have to obey. And then you have to obey as a viceroy, as a khalifa, representative of God. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, the first caliphate of Islam, when he took in charge, he gave a small sermon. He said, oh people, come here, oh Nas, listen, oh mankind, these people, who are, I am the ruler of you, come here. Listen, this is what Abu Bakr has to say, that you have chosen me for your leader. Alhamdulillah for that. Now listen, these feudals, these, the people of nepotism, cronyism, all these kinds of mentality of partiality, despotism, if these kind of people think that Abu Bakr is weak and cannot take a challenge, cannot, you know, reprimand these people, then they should leave. They should change their thinking, perception now, because their game is over. And if the poor people, weak people, scared people think that Abu Bakr is more, you know, uh, he's more powerful than those people, then they should remove this kind of perception. Because, you know, this perception we have, generally people have it, they're scared of these things, rulers. He said, think that I am with them. So you don't need to worry, Abu Bakr will protect you. And then he says, oh people, if I do good, help me. If I do bad, stop me. This is a leader. Not that you come and your VIP protocol started, you don't care what people are dying, or you just got it on the grounds of, you know, fame, popular sovereignty, which is haram in Islam. These all kind of things, when you have it, you can never pay attention on what economy system you are having it because of the back of your mind you are not scared. You need to be scared from Allah, the creator of you, which has given you limited time to serve the people. You are a lucky person to serve the people. If you do not suit, then trouble is coming to you very soon. Alexander the Great passed, you know, with open hand and nothing was on his hands. So every time is limited. Your heart is, you know, uh, beating towards your death, towards your grave. Every second you're losing one beat. Imagine that the one, the day of the, your time will come up, what you will do. So now we have a time to educate people to understand, especially the people of universities. These great people, you should understand. Now I'm going to tell you about this Sudan famine. Have a look. You know, we have Malala, very famous personality. I don't want to go into the political discussion of her, but generally she's famous now because she sacrificed for the educational system of Pakistan or the tribal areas. Okay. But what about the Malala, which I'm going to show you now in the video clip where the famine was hit and this sister is saving her two uh, siblings. And those siblings are so weak. They have, you know, malnutrition, malnourishment, that they are so weak that their body is rejecting cannot be resuscitated 
towards the healthy lifestyle because they're so weak, they lose their all fats, they lose their everything. Now the organs are getting eaten up to produce the energy in the body and they are dying slowly. Crucial, cruciable death. Astaghfirullah. And this another picture, look at that picture that the vulture is sitting and waiting that kid. This is Sudan famine in 1990. The photographer committed suicide after that. He said, I can't live this, you know, cruel world. And that, uh, this, uh, you know, that little girl was going to die. She was taking her last breaths. And the vulture was sitting that to eat that dead, you know, carrier. Astaghfirullah. This is the world we are living because of this whole usually system. The bubble we are living in, we don't even know how this paper currency is working. We do not even know the dynamics of paper currency. We don't even know what things make it. Huh? Intrinsic value. Umar made this law into PRP. Who will decide between the employer and employee relationship that if the person is doing this kind of effort, how would you evaluate him that how much pay he should be getting because of his little or whatsoever effort, PRP, performance related pay. How would you decide the intrinsic value of one thing? For example, a table is there. How would you evaluate? Uh -huh. I know how would you evaluate. You will see what cost was required, what effort was being made by making that chair or table. But my question, who will make or initiate the intrinsic price of that thing. Nobody knows. There is no panoon. There is no law. You are employer. Whatever exploitation you want to do, you can do with your employees. And employees are suffering because they don't know. You can't even pray properly because all this trouble coming in your mind, what my children will eat, what I will do tomorrow. These all things that keep coming in your mind in subconscious area of your brain. You can't help because of this, you know, dirty capitalistic system if you do not repent from Allah we are not saving ourselves from it you have to open the eyes at the last but not the least I'm going to give you the solution what is the solution before going into the solution I will tell you another sickness by ending this lecture of mine what is that the difference between needs and wishes today Fitna Dajjal is making a progress 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 towards needs converted into wishes but these will be always five elements five things are required by all these poor people to keep fighting forever till their graves to never think big or beyond their evil agenda food clothing rest sex shelter that's all either you don't have food you keep fighting for your food all your life or you don't have shelter, home, or you don't have clothing, or you don't have sex, no ways you, you, can, you can find uh, regarding as a Muslim, as a marriage, you can't do it. Number five, and uh, rest. Rest is the needs of a human being, you don't need a shelter, you need a rest. Now how would you get a rest when you don't have anxiety, when you don't have, you know, suffering from long kind of ordealments? You can remove your anxiety or panic attacks. But you are not. You will keep suffering from these five things. The poor person in the whole society, he will fighting for these five things till his death, which is the needs of every human being. Umar says that this is the further obligatory for every human being to have these five things by Allah. It's your right. You have to fight for that. Food, clothing, rest, shelter and sex. Because this is your human physiological needs. If you, don't, if you do not get these things, there will be problem in the society. Anti-social characterism, it will generate in the society. Anarchy will come in the society. You have to overcome these five basic elements or things which human body is required by the creator. Now, the society has been made that you keep fighting for five things, you don't even have it. And on the other hand, the person who has all these five things, we added wishes into his life. Ah, now wish comes. Food, I need a better food. And five star hotels. Ritz Carlton. Uh huh. Number two, shelter, I need a big shelter. Palaces, one or another. Again, palaces, again, palaces. This clothing, you know, dollar suit, like $5,000 suit. Rest, rest in jacuzzi. In a day spa, 
enjoying his life. People are dying every day. Let them go to hell. I don't care. I'm a millionaire. And five, sex. Can't, you know, are satisfied with your wife? No problem. Go for prostitution. This is what you are becoming. Needs converted into wishes. So you keep running these kind of, you know, bubble forever. Never understand what's beyond that. And this is what by every democratic ruler, either a Muslim or a non-Muslim, keep telling you these things. We will give you this. We will give you this. So your mind needs that. And they know what the customer needs. Dale Carnegie said that. The fish likes a worm. So I will give him a worm. But I don't like it. Fish likes it. Last point. What is the solution for all this? The solution is very clear. Islam, when Islam will come, as a social political economic system, it will make uncontrolled internal capital management or external capital management into controlled internal and external capital management. That's all. When you control all the system in your hands, the intrinsic value of the gold, the intrinsic value of the commodities, the intrinsic value of the PRP performance related pays by employer and employee relationships all the solution will be solved when Islam will come inshallah in the next lecture I will tell you the economical system of Islam how it's supposed to be done inshallah in detail introspection right now I can't I will tell you in detail how to control how to make the law of economical system which was laid by the guided caliphates how, how it will solve the problem and how can we get rid all from this usually bubble interest bubble which is going to make us fall into another recession very soon so once you control everything will be controlled in your own hands zakat will be controlled all the matters of islam will be controlled this is the solution to the humanity inshallah next lecture i will make it detail i hope I have, you know, given people enough evidence from the Islamic perspective about the optimal economical system of the world.